Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. David Pugh. I am a staff scientist at the CALST Visualization Core Laboratory. Today, I'm going to make a little tutorial video on how to get started running Microsoft Visual Studio Code uh, Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, on IBEX. So this is a, a common question that uh, I receive, or my colleagues and I receive via uh, tickets submitted to um, our IBEX help uh, mailing list or on Slack or, or other, other places. So I thought I would go ahead and make a tutorial video on exactly how you can develop using Microsoft Visual Studio Code on IBEX. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and log into IBEX. So here I'm, I'm logged into IBEX and I'm in my home directory. Okay, so you're probably used to using Microsoft uh, Visual Studio Code as a desktop application on your laptop or your, uh, your workstation. If you're a more advanced user, you may have even used the uh, SSH extension to Visual Studio Code to connect to an IBEX login node and develop um, using Microsoft Visual Studio Code on a login node. This is an okay workflow, uh, but it has a number of drawbacks. Probably the, the largest drawback is that if you're doing development work on a login node, then uh, you may be consuming significant resources and this may cause the login nodes to behave uh, sluggishly or just in general poorly uh, for other users. And so in general, we're going to discourage the use of um, Microsoft Visual Studio Code for your development work on login nodes. Instead, what I'm going to do is show you how to run Microsoft Visual Studio Code directly on compute nodes, which means you'll be able to either run them in a debug partition or on, batch, uh, on the batch partition, uh, depending on, on your preferences and the amount of resources that you, that you require. Okay, so first I wanna talk about why um, you won't be able to use the desktop version of Microsoft Visual Studio Code and connect to compute nodes on IBEX. The reason for this is that we do not allow direct SSH connections onto individual IBEX compute nodes. Now the setup behind Microsoft Visual Studio Code assumes that you can directly SSH into the remote node on which you want to develop. And that's not going to be the case for IBEX. IBEX being a shared system, we disallow direct SSH connections to individual compute nodes. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to install, you know, one of uh, several options for um, browser-based versions of Microsoft Visual Studio Code. And what this will allow us to do is run a VS Code in our browser, or sorry, run VS Code remotely on a compute node on IBEX and then connect to the VS Code server directly from your local web browser. So this is just going to be, it's going to be a very similar process to what you find uh, if you've used JupyterLab uh, on IBEX. And I have several uh, tutorial videos on how to get started with JupyterLab on IBEX. I'll put a link to those in this video. Um, but we're going to follow largely uh, the same process. And I'll, I'll talk through that process um, momentarily. So the particular version of, um, or the particular implementation, remote implementation of Microsoft Visual Studio Code that we're going to install is called Code Server. And um, this is one of a number of options that are basically forks of uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code and uh, with some added functionality to allow it to run in a web browser. Uh, there's another one um, called GitPod, uh, which was just open sourced yesterday. This might prove to be a, a better option in the future, but for now I'm going to go with the version that I have personally used um, on my work, and then maybe I'll make another video that will update this one if GitPod turns out to be uh, the better solution long term. Okay. So um, you can have a glance through the, the documentation for Code Server if you want. Um, but what I have done is I've actually created a, um, a repository called IBEX Code Server Install. 
um, which has all of the um, kind of shortcut scripts to install or uninstall code server into your home directory on IBEX. So this is going to follow a very similar pattern to installing Miniconda in your home directory on IBEX. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, clone this uh, repository. So we're going to go ahead and get our, our clone link here. And now we're going to go over to our home directory on GitHub. Sorry, not on GitHub, on the IBEX. And we are going to git clone this repository. Okay. And then if we change into the IBEX code server install repository, you can see that we have two scripts, uh, install code server and uninstall code server. And if we could just take a look at them. So in the install code server, it's just a one-liner that uses curl to download the, in, the code server installation script and run it with some slight modifications. The particular modification being that we are installing um, a standalone installation and not using the, um, the operating system specific package for code server, which requires um, admin privileges to install. And since we're installing in user space, we don't have admin privileges on, on, uh, on IBEX, unless you're a sysadmin. Um, so we're just going to install in user space. And that's what this script does. So if we just do um, source and then install code server, And this just takes about 30 seconds or something like this, not very long. OK. Um, now, at the end of this installation script, we're given a message that says that we need to extend our path in order to use code server. You actually don't need to do that. Uh, and the reason is that the directory um, dot local slash bin is already added to the path. So we can test this by saying uh, which code server. And we can see that we do indeed find the path or the, the code server uh, binary. And uh, if we do code server help, we'll see that we actually get the help menu for code server. Um, and then uh, if we wanted to echo out our path variable, we would look through here and see that indeed um, our, make this a little bit bigger. Um, here, the very last path actually is our user home slash dot local slash bin. So, so we're all good. OK, um, now if you wanted to uninstall, um, let me just clear this out a little bit. If you wanted to uninstall uh, code server, then you would do source um, uninstall code server. And the uninstall code server, if we go back and look at what that script is going to do, is basically going to remove um, three directories um, from uh, from your home or three directories where code server has been installed, uh, some settings and data, and then the actual application itself. And those things will be removed. And then if we type which code server, we get an error because code server cannot be found anywhere on our path. And then if we were to try to do code server help, there's no code server executable. So now code server is gone, but of course we actually want to use code server. So I'm just going to go back and install it again. Uh, the whole point of uninstalling it was just to demonstrate to you how to do that um, and to show you, in fact, that the script did work.
Okay, cool. There we go. Just check one more time. Cool. Okay. So there we go. That's all there is to it. So now that you have installed Code Server, check out the, the follow on video, which will show you how to actually launch a uh, launch Code Server as part of a running job.